Working in retail is never easy, especially when you have to deal with a bunch of crazies. Welcome to this episode of Tales from Retail. Our first tale is from Manjara. Customer buys about 10 things. Three of the items were $6.99, two with tax and one without tax. $6.99 times two equals $13.98. Customer's daughter comes back in to tell me that I overcharged them, so I asked to see the receipt knowing I did not. I asked her where was the mistake and she said that I charged her $13.98 and they got nothing for that price. You got two things for $6.99, so that's the subtotal of the two items. Yeah, but then you charged us $6.99 again. We only got two things you're saying. Yes, you did. You got the other thing, and that has no tax. That's why it's separate. Could you do the sale again? It's not right. So I do it again, as I'm able to void out sales, and it came out correctly. She begins to shake her head, and her mother comes in and pulls out the calculator on her phone, and they start going at it again. You see? You overcharged us. We, we got, got nothing, nothing for $13.98. I began to explain it and point at their things and show them which ones were $6.99, and they could still not understand that $6.99 twice equals $13.98. So then the daughter gets loud and says, Well, you don't have to give us an attitude. And I said, Well, I shouldn't have to explain things with apples and bananas, so you could figure out that $6.99 times 2 equals $13.98. One banana plus one banana equals two bananas. In disgust, they look at me and tell me that it was wrong. The amount they got on their calculator was not equaling the amount on the receipt because they forgot about taxes. I just don't know how these morons get through life. To be fair, I'm of the belief that both mother and daughter cheated off of people to be able to pass math because this right here is just basic math and if they can't even grasp that, I have to agree with the OP. I don't know how they've gotten through life so far. Our next tale is by Weaponized Diarrhea. This one is from years back when I worked at a mobile carrier store between 2006 and 2008. A customer came in complaining that her new phone kept turning off whenever she tried to answer a call. So my coworker and I gladly offered a troubleshoot, ask for the phone number and call. I picked up the call and it worked just fine. The lady asked how I did that and I said, I pressed the answer button. Maybe the battery was going dead when you tried? She insisted the battery was fully charged each time. So we tried two more times just to show her. My coworker then asked the lady if she could try herself. So we dialed her number from our store phone and waited. Her phone rings. She holds a button down and it turns off. My coworker and I look at each other, trying to hold back laughter and kindly informed this sweet lady that she's pressing the wrong button. It's the green one. You know, green means go. That one. I've never used that button before. I think my press while ringing button isn't working. The green button is the only one you're supposed to press when it's ringing, unless you want to ignore the call. Then you use the red one. That's not right. It says it right there, PWR, press while ringing. That was one of my most memorable days from that shit job. I definitely remember the pre-2010s and when cell phones started becoming more and more prevalent and more and more people were having them and there was just so many people who didn't know how to use them. I think I'd be in the same boat if I was an employee trying to help somebody like this. I'd have to contain my laughter, but I'd still help like they did. This next tale is from Understanding C7999. I used to work in a specialist running retailer where we sold running shoes, clothing, and accessories. What set us apart was that a lot of staff were runners, and we really took our time with customers to make sure they got the right things. A lot of the time we'd be talking people down from buying the most expensive shoe, jacket, or watch to help with their running if they really didn't need it or it would be actively bad for them. Example, very expensive shoes that did not match their foot shape so would likely cause blisters. As you can imagine, 
this used to take a lot of people by surprise, that we wouldn't just automatically sell them the wrong thing to make more money. And we built a lot of trust and got a lot of repeat customers that way. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Anyway, the company grew and got taken over as the original boss sold up to enjoy the retirement. I'm working in one of the shops one day and a customer comes in asking for a really obscure accessory for a running watch. He knows what it is, but is only fairly sure it'll do what he wants it to do, and wants to see if we've got one. Fair enough. I check and we don't, because it's really obscure. It's not even registered as a product on the till, and knowing how the special ordering system works for non-stock items is, you have to pay up front and there are no returns unless it's faulty. I let him know that it'll take about two weeks to get in, and if it doesn't work for him, he'll be stuck with it. But, Amazon has loads, can get it to him tomorrow, can sell it for cheaper than we can buy it, and he's got the option to return under distance selling regulations. I say to him it's best to go down that route as it'll be quicker, cheaper, and less risky for him that way. This is quite honestly the type of advice the company was built on. If there's a better way for the customer to do something, let them know. His response, and he was almost welling up with tears and anger, so you're telling me you won't order me one in? I just can't believe it. You guys have really gone downhill since you were taken over. Yeah, pal. Sorry for giving you the same sort of advice that was built on the company's reputation for 30 years. <laughs> Only time I actually laughed at the ridiculousness of someone in front of them. The fact that the customer has the irony to say that the company has gone downhill when nothing has effectively changed, and I could see this customer being the same kind of customer that gets the item ordered through the store, doesn't have a use for it or it doesn't do what they needed to, can't return it, and then complains and says the company went downhill. There's no winning with customers like that. Our next tale is by Discreet Screams. So, to set the scene, we had a $655 order due as soon as possible. It was for 130-ish blueprint scans. In all the downtime I had, I kept scanning as many blueprints as I could. Meanwhile, I get a customer requesting a couple photos printed on regular paper. I refer her to self-service and let her know how to get started. I also let her know that we have other orders we're working on. Barely 15 seconds passes, and she asks out loud if anyone can help her. Now, I literally had my cashier ringing, one of my two floor people ringing, and my other guy was assisting someone. I let her know everyone is busy, and before I can even mention sending someone over, she throws a fit. She can't believe how no one is available, and how seriously ridiculous this is. Then I say to her, that's retail for you, ma'am. And I hear her saying as she storms out the door, I guess you just lost a customer. Shivers in $655 order. Like, seriously, I get assisting guests as a priority, but like hell I'm going to waste 15 minutes of my time just waiting for you to figure out how to send an email. Then another 5 minutes, all for $2? Fuck outta here with that shit. The thing is, and in this... In this kind of case, I feel like the employee and workers would be more apt to help this woman if she just had a little bit of patience. But it definitely seems like she's the kind of woman to care and out because she thinks that she's the only person anywhere she goes. And our final tale is by Proof Ad 462 I'm a department manager at a medium-sized retailer. One day, I was directing staff on the floor when a guy strolls up and asks if he's interrupting me. I smile and say, no, you're good, what's up? He then proceeds to scowl and say he's going to ask someone else for help, then comes back a second later to ask my name to complain about me. I'm the person he has to complain to. This stuff happens pretty often. One time a lady interrupted me while talking to my dad about my dying mother while I was on break. She cuts me off mid-sentence with my dad and says she doesn't want to hear about my personal problems. I told her, that's fine, I'm not working right now, so she can ask another associate if they can help her. Then called one of my co-workers over to help her. She complains and I get a page for customer assistance. 
It's the same lady, so I walk up and say, this is regarding me, isn't it? Apologized and reiterated I wasn't working at the time. She complains to head office and makes up a story in an attempt to have me fired. Our interaction was on camera and clearly showed me not doing anything she claimed I did. People can be extremely petty and pathetic, and they wonder why nobody wants to help them. I can't help but wonder if this Karen literally went store to store that day just trying to complain to complain, because at some point, once you complain over dumb petty things, you have to ask yourself if you're actually complaining for a legitimate reason, or if you're complaining just to complain. Alright, that's enough tales for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Tales from Retail. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.